So what kind of a machine is it, this computer, which can tackle such an enormous diversity of tasks and come to the right answer with such lightning rapidity? This is the first of many questions which we shall put to Dr. B.V. Bowden, the principal of the Manchester College of Science and Technology. This is a typical small modern commercial computer. It cost about 35,000 pounds or you could hire it for something like 20 pounds an hour. It runs off an ordinary mains plug and it's capable of doing something like a thousand calculations every second. If you want to go for something a little fancier, you can get it for perhaps 60 or 70,000 pounds. That is a much larger machine than this one. But if you're really ambitious, you can pay as much as two and a half million pounds for a machine. And remember, that's twice as much as a Comet airliner. This is Atlas, the largest machine that has yet been built in England. It's being built for a government establishment. It is, of course, enormously more powerful than this one. It works faster, it will do half a dozen things at once, and it has an enormously larger memory. Nevertheless, this uh, computer here is capable of pretty sophisticated work. We're grateful to Ferranti for setting it up in the studio for us and for providing Mrs. Valerie Harris to work it for us, or rather, to program it, to give her her, her proper title of computer programmer. Uh, now, exactly how can we think of how a computer works, Dr. Bell? Well, this computer is like all others to some extent. In other words, if it, is to, it has to be supplied with two sets of information. It has to be told what it is to do with the numbers, and it also has to be supplied with numbers to work with. Now, supposing we're going to do something very simple, like multiplying 6 by 7. First of all, we feed 6 into the machine. And then, immediately thereafter, we have to say multiply by 7. Now, this involves two numbers, a 3, which will come up here and is assigned for multiply by, and 7 is the number we're going to multiply, do you for multiplying. Press the button and immediately multiply. Again, 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 as fast as you can go. Now, that is perhaps multiplying, say, six or seven times a second. Under normal circumstances, the machine will be fed with information from this punch tape, which, was fed, which will go into the reader, as we shall see in a moment, and the machine will be performing numerical operations not six or seven times, but a thousand times every second. All right, then, we've seen how the computer is operated from the console, either by uh, tapping numbered keys or by uh, feeding in a punch tape, as it were, in code. But now, Dr. Bowden, what about the works? Well, we have, this is the back of the computer, and all these panels here are like this one, which shows um, a large number of um, ele little electronic components which are capable of switching pulses from place to place. This machine switches pulses about in much the same sort of way as an abacus switches the little beads about on its wires. And this unit here, a much larger and bulkier one, is a memory. It's a store. And the, pulse, the pulses circulate round and round in that nickel wire at the speed of sound in the wire. And when they come out, they're transmitted electrically from place to place in the machine with the speed of light. Now, they stay going round in here for as long as required. As long as required. They can be remembered there um, until such time as the machine has to use them. And it is because of this that the machine has its extraordinary speed. The speed of calculation of these machines is really quite prodigious and one must get it into perspective. We are used to the idea that the cosmonauts going round the Earth do so at 20,000 miles an hour, which is 5,000 times as fast as a man is walking at 4 miles an hour. But this machine, which as I said is a simple one, relatively speaking, will do arithmetic about a th at least a million times as fast as you or I could do it with pen and paper. But even this incredible rapidity at arithmetic doesn't account for its ability to do the sort of things we no, just No, by said. no means. The machine is capable of doing logical operations as well as arithmetic operations. And a very elementary demonstration of this is set up here. The machine has now got in its store um, a series of numbers which have been chosen quite at random, and we're going to ask it to sort them into ascending order of size. And it will do this by comparing one number with the next and having made the comparison, it will then set them out in order. And Mrs. Harris will now set the machine in motion, and you'll see in a moment, it's now has completed its task, and the numbers are set out in order of size. This is a trivial operation, but it illustrates the point. Now, this, in fact, was, was not uh, just a mathematical calculation. You suggest it was a process of logic. Indeed it was. Well, now, if a computer is capable of logic, then this clearly, of course, opens up the most exciting avenues. 
And we can make this even more clear, I think, in another demonstration which we have set up at the far end of the studio with a similar type of computer. Kneeling by the apparatus is Mr. Ken Chisholm, one of the English electric engineers responsible for the development of this computer, KDN2, which is going to be programmed for us by Mr. Turner. Mr. Chisholm, what is the purpose of this demonstration? It illustrates some of the basic principles involved in industrial automatic control. And how do you do that with a model railway? Well, it, you can make up any train of four carriages in any sequence you like to specify. I see. So presumably the first step is to tell the computer what the present state of play is. Yes. Now, uh, we've got to feed into the computer the carriages on the train at the moment, which is one, two and three in that order. And you see how simply this information yes. is fed in by Mr. Turner. And the sidings? Yes, we need those as well, which is carriages four, five and six. Now, from that information, this train can build itself up in any order which I require. Yes. Right, well now, uh, we've given it, uh, during trial runs, just about every conceivable combination. We'll try and make it as difficult as possible this time. Two is the middle one on the train, so we'll start with that. Uh, four is in the siding, so we'll have that. Then another one off the train, say three. And then another one out of the siding, five. So let's have two, four, three, five. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Now, what's happening over there? Well, the computer is reporting via the electric typewriter on the sequence that you've asked for. And it's got it right, 2435. Meantime, you see, the train has stopped itself. Remember, there's nobody driving this train by remote control except the computer. Now, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to couple up with the trucks in the uh, siding three, very gently, as you see. Beautifully driven. Yes and we'll push them up here onto the uncoupling there. Now, by doing this, of course, it's catered for every possible sequence which we might have asked for. You it's got have. the lot. It's got the lot now, yes. Mm -hmm. And it goes up on the ramp to start the shunting process. You notice how it slows down to take the corner. Right, now, what's it going to do with six, then? Well, we don't want six, so it puts it in siding three out of the way. And it switches the points itself. Number five, we do want number four we want later, so that goes down the middle one. This, of course, is, is a very, very efficient model. What happens if something goes wrong? Well, um, it can, it, in certain cases, it's self-correcting. Mr. Turner yeah. stops a truck in the most difficult possible place, right on a, on a point. <laughs> and there's the answer. Yes. Oh, the little shunter decided it didn't want another push, anyway. Yes, some bucket builders. Well, now, let's see. It's got two wagons right and two to go, so it collects the two spare ones. It's got to bring those all the way back, yes, sir. which is an opportunity for me to say that although, of course, the railway is a toy, the computer is anything but a toy. In fact, it's been bought by the Western region of British Railways for the control of real railway wagon utilisation as opposed to shunting. It's estimated that it will save British Railways jolly near two million pounds for an investment of only 25,000 pounds, which is a pretty staggering demonstration. The train is now in the right order, 5342, not stationary in the station. And now, presumably, that is the end of the exercise. Oh, that was a dirty trick, Mr. Turner uncouples one of the wagons. Let's see what happens. The train stops and reports. Now, let's see what it's got to say for itself. Someone's pinched a truck. So now, the train goes back. Supposing that truck weren't there, Mr. Chisholm, what, would it still keep on coming back? It would go back to find it a number of times, about four times, and then give up. It would give up by itself? Well, there's no, m not much point in doing it more than four times. And now it's away. Well, there we are. Surely a classic demonstration of the power of logic demonstrated by a computer. A very complex and difficult problem. Gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed.